In chapter three, we're going to cover attacking chess. Who doesn't like to attack? Attacking chess is very, very fun and very sharp. So in this, in this chapter, we're going to cover some incredible games where you can see a lot of fireworks, especially, you know, in opposite side castles. Also, we're going to see the idea of how to attack when, you, when there's, a, in the game, same side castle, for example, short side castle or long side castle. So I'm very sure you're going to have great fun in this game, in this chapter. Today, I'm going to show you a very nice game between Michal Shishin Adrian and Chernin Alexander. This game was played in the Capablanca Memorial. This is a very traditional tournament. It was held in 1981 um, in Cuba, in Cienfuegos, Cuba. So I like this game very much because um, it comes in one point of the, of the game that you have to make a very important decision. And that was decision that was made in the game. Um, it was not a decision made based on calculation. It was mostly based under intuition because in that position it, it will be very hard to uh, analyze what was coming. But let's see, let's see, and then you will you will find out what I'm talking about. So okay, I'm gonna go fast in the opening. We can see here's a French defense. So this is a basic moves in the opening, very known theory. But like I'm saying, I'm not gonna cover this. We are going to concentrate mostly in the middle game. Um, bishop e7, rook takes, queen takes. Okay, so which which exchange queens? Um, you know, in this position, uh, black decides to to get the the c6 weak pawn in order to get a, a fixed knight, well, a good square for the knight on d5. Also, maybe in certain positions to get um, some attack or some activity in the open file in the d or in the b. And that's the idea of playing c6. And also, maybe. Mm, Maybe they thought that the pawn, or maybe Black thought that the pawn on c6 was not easily a target. I don't like it so much because, you know, after rook c4, immediately the pawn started to become or have a little pressure. So, okay, but let's see the main position. So, this is the main position. Uh, it's difficult to think and realize this is like the main position where we have to create the plan to follow the game. Now, if we analyze this position, we see that uh, we white has a very nice pawn structure. Uh, we have an active, white has an active rook, a well-placed knight. Why not a nice bishop on g5? And especially a perfect pawn structure. And black is still a little bit down in development. He has not castle, so in the moment he has not castle, he has not connect both rooks. The pawn structure is weak because there are a few islands. One, two islands. So let's see. So let's continue analyzing this position. So like I said before, there's a pawn structure is very weak for black. We have active pieces, but it's not so easy to know how to continue in this position. The next move, uh, I think most of us will have played a move like knight e5. This looks like a, a very strong move because the knight goes to the center. It can pressure later on the pawn on c5. And um, it can also just centralize. But knight e5 actually gets has a very nice reply for black. So knight d7, for example. And probably the knight will have to go back to f3. Because if bishop takes e7, we can do an intermediate move. Knight takes e5. And if rook takes, maybe queen knight d7 will give us a little problem on um, white's position. So let's go back. So we saw knight d7. Um, what other move 
when we play for y okay rook d1 is also a good move why not we put the rook in the open file and and then maybe after rook d1 maybe black could have tried to play a move like um rook d8 to change the rooks or also knight d7 to try to for example with takes takes and then at least i connected the two rooks and the nice defending c5 still why this is better this is for sure but the black's position is much better than three moves ago okay so we saw knight d7 as a possibility after rook d1 so if we know and we understand that maybe the next move for black will be to to remove the knight then we think that bishop f6 might be the right move why bishop f6 okay mainly uh because the knight uh, could have become a strong piece here for example if bishop takes bishop he loses the pawn on c5 so bishop takes bishop is not a possibility so if bishop takes bishop is not a possibility he has to take with the pawn now taking the pawn what happens black again damage his pawn structure okay he got an open file but is this open file worth it i don't know because after rook goes to g8 i can just play g3 and my pawn will be very well defended and the rook will be going against a very a pawn on g3 which is defended by two pawns so i don't know if it's uh, um, something as an advantage to to have this open file on g i don't think so so after bishop takes f6 pawn takes f6 now uh, black white has a good position a better position because we have better pawn structure uh another key thing is that the bishop on e7 remains even weaker because we place another pawn in black square and this bishop has to be prisoner on e7 to defend the c5 pawn for the whole game practically for the whole game okay let's see what happened after bishop takes fc pawn takes f6 rook d1 of course is the only piece that was not doing anything rook b8 and now the next move is a very strong move it's a move that uh, probably uh, not even grandmasters do it sometimes i mean here an other um, some move that comes to mind right away is to play something like i don't know knight, knight d2 that would be a, a normal move to i don't know maybe go to knight e4 to centralize the knight to pressure some weaknesses and and to activate the knight a little bit more that would be like a regular plan for for white here and um it, of course it's not a bad plan another thing that could be uh a move for for white would be this move rook a4 to attack the weaknesses but after rook a4 i can just play rook b7 of course still white has a great position but maybe we have a better plan okay we saw 92 now in the game Mihal Shishin played rook d3 you know this is a very deep move it looks like a normal move like this but it's a very deep move why is that a very big uh, deep move because he wants to free the rook before placing the knight to the best squares because before as we saw after rook b8 if knight d2 you know okay it's a good move as well but the rook is not so active as in d3 so that's why after rook b8 rook d3 is an amazing move with the idea of playing rook a3 pressuring the weak squares weak pawns so he played rook b4 of course a capturing will be just great for black because after pawn takes the the c5 pawn is not there anymore there's no more weakness and why help black get connected pawns again so a better structure so it's not a good idea to take mm, what else can i say okay rook c3 um, rook c3 c3 is also a move that i would not play in the position because i would not like to play rook c3 because i'm kind of making the rook prisoner i have to wait there 
uh, defending on defending the the c4 rook. Maybe after after that move, I could just play king d7 and and um, and then rook b8, and then I'm I'm getting a little bit uh, of counterplay and at least much better position than before. So rook c3 doesn't make any sense, especially because this rook has to go to a3 to attack. Of course, with this will be terrible because for many reasons, mainly you you just block the 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 square for the the rook, and then you you will get double pawns. So not b3, not rook c3. So knight c4. Knight c4 is a great move because. It defends the rook and also it's getting ready to place their knight to c4 after white black takes. So black plays rook g8. Rook g8 attacking g3. You know, in this position you have to play simple. He attacks, okay, you defend with the pawn. Not starting to, to think so much of doing rook g3 or nothing like that because this rook has other future, has another future. So g3. After g3, uh, black decided to take, take, and rook g4. You know, in I have shown this game also to some of my students, and here a few have answered uh, when I have asked, okay, what move would you play here? Mm, have answered with some move that is not so precise. It looks okay, it looks good. Maybe it's also possible. Why not? Because here Y has a good advantage, but it's not the best in this position. Here, B3 would be a mistake. Because again, I'm blocking the rook from coming to A3. It's a way to play. But on the other hand, it's also possi possible then for the king to move up on this direction. But it's a very long plan. If I can if I can attack the pawn with rook a seven, a uh, rook sorry, rook a three right away, why to wait until the king marches all the way here? So here the most simple move is just to play a f4. Okay, f4 I don't know what can black play. I mean black cannot really play any counter attacking move because I could just play h3 and when he goes away, I'll take the pawn. I can take the pawn, why not? And it'll be pawn up with an excellent position. So here they're not really counter-attacking moves. So he played h5. Okay, the idea of h5, churning, wanted to play h h4, and then kind of uh weaken the g3 pawn. But this g3 pawn is easily defended. But what else can black play? I mean, there's not many ways to counterattack here. So he played h5. And now here, it's a very important part of the game as well. Here, what to play? When they want to, to weaken your, your pawn structure, you have to remember to avoid moving your pawns. Because if you move your pawns, you just help your opponent's job. You know, here, if for example, you play h3, rook goes back, and then um, this g3 will be a weakness for the whole game. It will be very difficult. I mean, not difficult, but it's just a headache to have one weak pawn here. Yeah, he has to play h4. Black wants to play h4 to play pawn takes, pawn takes, and create one of your weaknesses. So if you play h3, you just help him do i mean you weaken yourself without letting without him without your opponent doing anything so it's better just to stay like that and then realize what your opponent wants to play your opponent wants to play h4 and pawn takes and pawn takes so your only backwards pawn and weak pawn will be g3 so let's uh, let's defend it with all the pieces so michael shishin play king d2 After king d2, uh, there could, I mean, the idea is clear. He's gonna go king e2, king f2, or king f3, and defend the g3 pawn and activate the king. So after king d2, it's still black play h4, king e2, take, of course, to take with the pawn. And then 
black play rook g6. The idea of rook g6 is to try to get some counter uh, attack in the open file. So now finally it's time to play rook a3. Rook a3, rook h6. You know, in this game, I like I like the the way Mihal Shishin play. Instead of taking the pawn right away, because the pawn is anyway on a7, nobody can defend the defend that pawn anymore. So he first created an excellent solid position before taking that pawn. That pawn, anyways, is going to be white pawn in a few moves. Um, few moves in two moves. King f3, rook h2. He's attacking c2. And then simply c3. And now what black is this is a, a, a funny a funny thing that black is in the in the second rank, which is supposed to be like the best rank for the rook in an open rank, but he cannot attack anything. And he's practically okay, he has the active rook, but he doesn't attack anything. And the bishop on e7 is not doing anything, he's practically peace down. Uh, so after this after this move, um, he practically resigned uh, because after rook takes a seven, he has no move. I mean, if he goes back to the, I don't know where he can go to with the rook rook here to to play some checks. As you, you just take on a seven, and then this a two pawn will be marching all the way nonstop with support of the knight on c four and the rook. So the key moment, let's go back to the key moment in this position. This is the key moment. I'm sure that uh, Adrian, Mihal Shishin, did not calculate all the way through the position we just saw, but his experience and knowledge of this time, type of position showed him and told him that he should play bishop takes here, bishop takes knight, bishop takes knight on f6, pawn takes, and now realize how worse the position is because the po the only piece that could have done something to activate was the knight so that's how you have in in a position sometimes when you, you when you feel it comes to the 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 main position you have to stop think and realize which are your best pieces which are which are your worst pieces um what are your stronger squares, your weaker squares, and also from your your opponents? So in that in that way, you have to make your plan. Here, that's how I decided to play bishop takes, pawn takes. So this is the 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 key position. Then we have to also realize the wonderful move rook to d3. So in that sense, um. Don't make the mistakes that, that we made many times is play automatically. For example, this is this is a position that easily white can play automatically knight d2. Uh, so just always think about continuing continuing your plan with but with more active moves. Try to make all your pieces active. And of course remember that if there's there's a weaknesses like this, a7 and, and c5. Try to use all your pieces. The, try to activate all your pieces. Okay, another key moment here um, is, believe it or not, this king, e, king d2. After king d2, it's also amazing because after king d2, uh, practically the game is over. He's gonna defend the only, well, I don't even know if I should call it weakness, but the only uh, pawn that could be under attack, and 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 then concentrate with his two pieces to take the rest of the of the pieces. So you see also how this rook on on the d file uh, control the king from coming up and and defending his pawns. So this game is a fantastic game. It's a simple game. It looks as, like a sim very simple uh, chess, but it, it contains like this bishop takes f6, which is very difficult to do if you haven't seen uh, similar positions or you don't have 
that well knowledge of, of this type of extra structure upon structure so um so i hope you enjoy this game and um and next time remember when you get uh the main position of the of the game think about which piece from your opponent can do more in the position and try to eliminate it and and get a simple position with active pieces okay thank you very much i hope you enjoyed the game i love this game by the way thank you